Hey there, this is going to be a good one. We're going to be talking about some unusual chord progressions. And actually, before I jump in, uh, if you're part of the replay crew, let us know where you're coming from. And we're going to jump right in. So the thumbnail on this one was a little unusual. Uh, there's kind of a, a freaky looking picture of someone's eye or what appears to be an eye. And that will all make sense as we go forward. <laughs> it might not make total sense, but it actually will make sense. And so in harmony, in chord progressions, there are sometimes really cool hidden patterns that are just hiding in plain sight. And once you see them, once you recognize what they are and why they're there, it enriches the song and you can use these tricks in your own songwriting to take your, your music to the next level. So we're going to use a very interesting song example here. And it's one that I've loved for a long time, ever since the first time I heard it, which is a song by They Might Be Giants called Birdhouse in Your Soul. So this was a song from, I think it was 1991, their album Flood, which itself is like a greatest hits album because it has so many great tracks back to back. And Birdhouse in Your Soul has a really interesting sound to it. And part of the reason for that interesting sound is because it has this crazy chord progression. So if we look at the chords in the circle of fifths together, it's like they almost uh, totally globe trot around the entire circle of fifths, major chords and a lot of minor chords. So there's clearly a lot of modal mixture going on. Uh, and it would, it would take quite a while to dissect and digest this entire song, all of the chords in these various song sections and progressions. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on just the intro in this song. And even the intro, though, has some really interesting stuff going on. Uh, so They Might Be Giants, if you don't know, are a duo, the Johns, as they're called, John Flansburg and John Linnell. And this is actually, I think, a photo shoot from around the time that Birdhouse and Your Soul came out. And if you've ever seen the video, I think these like visors that they have show up in the video. They're interesting dudes. So if you don't know them, definitely check them out, especially this song. Uh, it's so good. And the lyrics are kind of quirky with They Might Be Giants, which is cool about these guys because they just don't seem to care whether you think they're cool or not which in my opinion makes them especially cool. But uh, let's look at, like I say, just the intro. And the intro itself has five major chords and th uh, no, actually six major chords and two minor chords. We've got six major or five plus one is six major chords and then two minor chords. So we're gonna look at why these chords are used, why they sound so good and what's going on in this pattern that actually gives it some harmonic structure and some, some cool depth that is uh, hard to notice at first. So part of the reason it's so hard to notice is uh, because of the lyrics. So let's play through this. And uh, if you know the song, you'll know what I'm talking about. So it's... I'm your only friend, I'm not your only friend, but I'm... <laughs> like what is going on with the lyrics? The lyrics are so interesting that they can drive you to distraction. So I'm your only friend. I'm not your only friend, but I'm a little glowing friend, but really I'm not actually your friend, but I am. So that's how the song starts. And it only gets more interesting and quirky from here. Uh, but we're going to stick to the, the intro, like I say. And um, that's something about the lyrics of a song that, because they speak to the, the cognitive part of your brain, uh, they can kind of grab hold of your attention and obscure some of the melody and harmony that's going on below the surface. So other times we talk about the layers of a song and you have basically four layers. It's like a sandwich where you have rhythm or by that I really mean percussion because rhythm imbues every layer of music. Then you have harmony or the chord progressions. On top of the harmony, you have the melody, which is the melodic thread that surfs the waves of the chord progression. 
uh, and, and moves in tandem through time with the harmony. Uh, in the course, I think it's lesson 14, we really dive into this in depth. But uh, on top of all of that are the lyrics. And so the lyrics are basically the, the verbal enunciation of what the music is conveying tonally. And the lyrics in this case, uh, being the top layer, it can be hard if this is your eyeball and you're trying to look at the, the music, trying to penetrate those lyrics. The lyrics are so interesting and captivating that there's some stuff under the surface here that is really cool. And so we're going to remove the lyrics right now, as cool as they are, and we're just gonna uh, splice. We're gonna take the magnifying glass and look directly at harmony or the chord progression to see a really cool pattern. So with that said, let's pull up just the chord progression itself. And we're gonna look at this in some, some different ways. So it starts with the C major chord and I have the Roman numerals here to give some context and show how these chords fit together. We're going to use the circle of fifths to dissect it even more, but it starts with, and I'm going to do the melody to at least follow the, the uh, melodic thread. So it's so C major to D minor seven to E flat major to F major to uh, where does it go next? Uh, oh, B flat, B flat major to C minor to D flat major to G major. That's just wacky. And if, <laughs> if we look at the circle of fifths, you can see a little more what's going on here. So we start with a C major and we move to a D minor. So it's a major one to a minor two chord. Okay. So, so far we're starting on the one of Ionian. Ionian is just a fancy name of the major key or the major scale. So C major to D minor is a one to a two progression. But then pretty much right out of the gate, we start borrowing some chords from over here. We get the flat major three chord, which is E flat and F. So we're, we're kind of moving around. And so in a way, we're kind of shifting over into this other mode because we also incorporate a, a minor one chord. So I'm getting ahead of myself. We got one two, four, flat three, oh, sorry, sorry, we go one, two, flat three, four, and then we have um, flat seven, minor one, and then we come even further over to the flat two, and then the five and the one. So what is going on there? Because that is a whole lot of motion, a whole lot of motion, and uh, it can seem confusing and even disorienting uh, if you don't, like I say, get at this underlying pattern that is explaining what's really going on here. Okay. So let's play that one more time. So it's. And then it goes into the song. So what, what is up with that? Let's dive in even deeper and there we'll come back to this chord progression uh, in guitar form, but let's, let's uh, if, if we had this chord progression on, on a microscope, little plate of glass, we're going to zoom in. We're going to crank up the magnification to look beyond just the chords. The chords are showing us this pattern. It's we're actually staring at it's staring us in the face. We're staring it in the face. We're looking at the pattern that we're going to get at here but with all of the different notes that uh, uh, and finger positions for the different chords, it's not yet quite obvious. So like I say, let's, let's crank up the magnification on our magnifying glass. And we're gonna show these chords, we're gonna look at these chords in a slightly different format, which is a table format, okay? So um, we have a C major chord, which is C, E, and G. And then we have a D7 chord, which is D, F, A, and C. And then E flat major, E flat, G, and B flat. And F, F, A, and C. And then B flat major, which is B flat, D, and F. And then C minor, C, F, or sorry, C, E flat, and G. D flat major, D flat, F, and A flat. G major. G, B, and D, and then we come back to C to start the song. 
So on a keyboard here, for example, we're going C to D minor seven to E flat major to F, D flat major, C minor to D flat major to G major and then C way up here or it's the same chord down there. So it's a lot of harmonic movement. I'm showing them in this format, which actually is kind of like leading us towards the answer of what's going on, but kind of interesting. Now, these inversions of the chords aren't necessarily what the Johns of They Might Be Giants played in sequence, but when you lay them out like this, an interesting pattern occurs, which is if you take, oh, if you take the first note in the first uh, four chords, and, or the root notes, in other words, and you take the fifth notes or the dominance of the next three chords, and then you include the middle chord of, of G and then back to C, the last chord, you get the notes C, D, E flat, F, and then F is repeated, G, A flat, B, and C, or And if you've ever heard that pattern before, that is the harmonic minor scale. So let's uh, look at, let me make a cleaner line here. It's like, that was a little scribbly when I made it. We have, my pen doesn't work yet. We have, a one, interval two is D, Flat three is an E flat, and then a four here with the, uh, oh, let's see if I can get back to where I'm trying. Okay, four. <laughs> see if my fingers can do it. And then five. My, my iPad pen power died, and so I'm trying to do it with my finger, and it's getting a little bit sketchy. Oh, there we go. I'd like it to be sketchy. I'd like to sketch with my finger, but it's not quite catching. So then we have a flat six, a seven, and an eight. Oh, it kind of worked. It's supposed to be a six. Sweet. Let's try it. I mean, that's supposed to be a five. So we have a one, two, flat three, four, five, flat, uh, uh, sorry, flat six, seven, and eight. So with that harmonic minor scale, C harmonic minor in mind, see if you can hear it with the progression. It's Oh, sorry. I got ahead of myself. Oh yeah. That's the harmonic minor on top of the chord progression. So when you come back to the actual chord progression that we looked at at the start in the circle of fifths, we do on some of these lines, we have like all of these chords in the circle of fifths that seem totally random, totally unrelated, but connecting those are notes within the harmonic minor scale. They're not necessarily the root notes of the respective chords. They're found nestled in those different harmonies. But as you play those harmonies, the it's like the backbone or the structure, the, the, the spine that connects all of these different chords and gives it a sense of cohesion that it might not have otherwise because it's otherwise pretty eclectic in the use of all these different chords but that's kind of the thread that connects those chords. So I'm gonna play that one more time on the guitar to uh, hear that. So it's. The cool thing about the melody is along with the lyrics, the melody is kind of obscuring 
that harmonic structure or, or obscuring that pattern, that harmonic minor scale that's kind of keeping it all together along with the lyrics. So you have these lyrics about this glowing friend, being your friend, not being your friend. <laughs> There's that whole side story going on. And then you have the melody that is kind of like monotonous in a way. It's like a lot of that bouncing on that same note. But then below it all is that really cool progression. gives it a really cool feel sense of cohesion and then if you know the album flood by they might be giants you know you have that harmonic minor scale definitely has an exotic sound to it sorry uh let's try that again so we got like if uh if you know that album you have istanbul it was Constantinople, now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople, been a long time gone since Constantinople. Like there's that there's that song, which is another awesome song on that album that has kind of that minor feel to the which I actually just noticed right before uh, as I was putting this together, that part of the reason, if you know that song, part of the reason that uh, Istanbul, not Constantinople, is so great is because it's basically putting on the Ritz. Uh, if you know that if you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? It's Istanbul, was Constantinople, but not a long time gone since Constantinople. Um, and that also has kind of that, that minor feel, that kind of tense to Western ears exotic sound that is kind of alluded to already in the intro to birdhouse in your soul which doesn't necessarily sound that exotic the song itself but with like little hidden mickeys as it were these little easter eggs of musical patterns within it it gives it a lot of texture and nuance that that makes the song i think amazing and i personally love this song because uh, it brings me back to like i was uh that prepubescent glow <laughs> <laughs> like when that album came out for me personally, where I was discovering ping pong. And I remember I was over at a friend's house and he had the cassette tape because it was cassette taped and he pressed play. And it was like, what is even going on here? It was, it was super cool. And so to have, I had no sense of music theory at the time, but now being able to dissect these patterns and understand it at a deeper level is super cool. It's super fun to be able to get into the the actual patterns and theory behind this song which is super cool that the johns knew what they were doing at the time so imagine since then they've been progressing on their their journey of music theory all along and it's cool to be wherever you are in your musical theory journey it's cool to be there because there's it's always cool it's like always fun interesting things to see explore discover and geek out about so that's, I mean, that's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, and it's because I think of that harmonic minor scale. Which I haven't really talked a whole lot about in the videos, the harmonic minor. Uh, but it, it is super cool and it, uh, it can make for some really good music. So uh, this might be one of the shortest ones that I've done. <laughs> because it was, it's kind of... That's that's the gist of it. I will uh, be posting these diagrams in locals so that you can geek out with these patterns yourself as you're going through. Um, and uh, oh, many vibes. So what kind of bass is that back there? This is a Rickenbacker that I bought uh, for a hundred bucks back in the day. I think it was it was for sale in a guitar shop where I don't think they understood how awesome it was, and so I got a really good deal on it. I, it was to replace an old Hofner ripoff. It wasn't a Hofner, but it was a violin chip bass like Paul McCartney that was like, whoa, that's amazing. That I also bought for $100. And that, I was the one who got ripped off on that one. <laughs> that I ripped off the guitar shop on this one. I actually ran into a guy uh, at, at uh, a guitar shop a couple of months ago. And we were talking about bass guitars. And he's like, yeah, I used to have a Rickenbacker. Because I, I said, yeah, I have a Rickenbacker. 
And he's like, I used to have one and my, my ex-wife sold it to some shop years ago. And I was like, man, I might've actually picked up that guy's, that might be why I got a deal on it. Anyway, that's, that's the Rickenbacker. And uh, it does have some early prototype labels on there that I am going to be uh, creating base labels specifically for base uh, coming up once the course is done. Um, Caleb, how, do, how uh, do you like animals as leaders? Um, I will profess my ignorance that I actually don't know animals as leaders. Is that a band name? And if it is, maybe that's a blasphemous question. Maybe I should know this already, uh, but I actually don't know. Uh, and if they're awesome, are they, do they have kind of a They Might Be Giants vibe to them? Interested to know. They Might Be Giants, speaking of, have some really good stuff that you might not know because it was geared toward children. Uh, they have uh, some children's albums. They actually got a Grammy for one of them. It's Here Comes Science, Here Come the One, Two, Threes, and Here Come the ABCs. And Here Comes Science is from A to Z, an amazing album. It's actually one of my favorite albums. Definitely check it out because it has some really good stuff. Uh, so I, I like I like that. And uh, if Animals as Leaders is a band, if I'm not totally off in the wrong direction on that, I'll, I'll check them out. Um, yeah, the, uh, the speaking of the course, so with the base labels in the course, just as a reminder, because I've been relatively quiet on locals in the sense that I'm not, I'm like loud on the back end, meaning it's like I'm working all the time on part five of the course, lesson 18 about modes is possibly going to be the most intensive one so far. It, it definitely is on my mind, but I'm, I'm distilling key points into hopefully a clear description with a, a clear path on how modes work. Modes are really important in music. And sometimes I, I mention modal mixture and borrowed chords and uh, different modes. You know, we have Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian and all that. I talk about them here and there, but I haven't put together like this cohesive, coherent thread where like the concepts build on each other until now in lesson 18 and part five. So that's what I'm working on right now, and uh, I'm excited to get that out. Uh, but that's been the focus right now. Um, and then, uh, and then with this, because I think this is a good one to uh, soak in, as geeky as it is, uh, this intro with the harmonic minor undercurrent going on. I'll post these diagrams in the community and locals, so you've got them there. Uh, yeah. So Tosin Abasi is the guitar player. Oh, interesting. So. Um, if I'm saying that right too. So I'll have to check that out. It's mind blowing music right on. Thanks for the, uh, the heads up on that. I'll check that out and, and see what they're about. Are they like, are they making music at, like up till now? Um, Hey Mike, so thankful for your free music lessons. Where can we find your music? If you have any, thank you for your feedback. I'm glad that the lessons are helpful. So with my music, um, I haven't like really published my music out there. Like I enjoy totally love the songwriting process, which is, which I've dedicated my life toward. Um, I'm kind of like, honestly shy when it comes to <laughs> performing. Um, I'm to be honest, I'm a total introvert. So like uh, cr even creating videos and, and, and hanging out is kind of like outside my comfort zone. <laughs> honestly, I'll be, I'll be totally honest. And so when it comes to, uh, you know, putting my music out there, like even playing these progressions, I'm kind of like a little self-conscious to be totally honest. So um, sometime I'll, I'll, I'll uh, look at posting some songs like on locals it might be interesting to hear. Um, and are you making music? It'd be cool to hear. Like, do you have, do you have some music? I'd love to hear like the animals as leaders picking up some good tips right now. I'm sharing some tips on here comes science. Definitely check that out. And if you have some songs that you want to share or there's a link to it, let us know because it would be cool to hear. Um, okay, so please focus on Phrygian dominant. Yes, um, I will definitely. Uh, in fact, in in the modes lesson, lesson eighteen, um, I I get into modes uh, Phrygian dominant specifically. I have a video on the channel here that um, 
that touches on some Phrygian examples. Phrygian as a mode is um, relatively obscure, depending on the genre and style of music that you're into. Um, but even then, Phrygian isn't as common, say, as Phrygian dominant, because Phrygian dominant, it's based on a slightly different pattern that is more conducive to chords that create some better tension and resolution within that mode. Uh, and so I do have a video, if, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out, um, that includes some examples. Uh, there's a Muse song specifically that uh, is actually really, really good that uses the Phrygian dominant. And at the moment, it's slipping my mind what the name of that song is, but it's really good. Um, and then speaking of the Lesson 18 in Part 5, it, it is, like I say, it's the, possibly the longest lesson so far. Um, I'm not totally done with it, but it's shaping up to be even longer than lesson 10, which is saying something. If you know part three, lesson 10 gets into music notation and dismantles notation to uh, expose it for what it is, which is a, an ill-suited de facto method that leads us astray when it comes to learning music theory. But part five, lesson 18, modes, there's so much content to cover um, where there's so many, I was actually just describing this the other day that it's the process of creating lesson 18. It's almost like, you know, the lizard <laughs> that, that runs on water and it like goes so fast so they can actually like tread the water and like run across a pond. That's kind of how it's shaping up to be for lesson 18 for me, because modes in particular have, there are so many rabbit holes, so many like Alice in Wonderland wonderlands that you can fall into um, because it's just so extensive and expansive and, and amazing that I'm kind of like going at a speed that I don't fall into one of the, the rabbit holes as I'm running to mix metaphors with the lizard on the pond and a rabbit running through a field. And so um, there's so much content to cover that I'm actually uh, kind of only touching on some of the key points and then i'm going to have a whole mini series dedicated to modes modal patterns and progressions and examples and all that though i do include examples and progressions that's a long response to your comment about phrygian dominant but i do touch on phrygian, phrygian dominant in a video here also in the course uh, lesson 18 and also more so as we go forward uh getting into some of those modes some of the modes i i personally hadn't been super exposed to uh, just because as you get into some of the darker modes, like Phrygian dominant is almost as dark as it gets, dark as it gets in terms of the modal spectrum of light to dark, which I'll explain more. And there's so much content. There's like so much information that the dam is building with all of these lessons in part five that I, literally it's like a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that we're going to be getting into. Um, so I'm excited for that. But uh, one of them has to do with uh just the different flavors of modes and how they can shape shape your music and i for the longest time and even honestly still i i kind of gravitate towards the lighter modes ionian mixolydian dorian um aeolian but lydian and, and below on the high end and the low end of the modal spectrum are a little less traversed by my ears but as I've been playing around with modes, they definitely have uh, piqued my interest and caught my ear, <laughs> figuratively speaking. And so, uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about for Gene Dominant. How's that for the longest answer <laughs> to a short short comment? Um, so yeah, uh, if you haven't checked out, they might be giants. Check them out a bit more. We've got some really good stuff, and. That I think is kind of wraps it up for this one. It was it was a fun one to talk talk about, and I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Like always, if you're part of the replay crew, let us know where you're you're coming from, and I will see you real soon. Have have a great rest of the week, and uh, we'll talk soon.